Wanna make a gorgeous, party-ready dress but stumped by the pattern instructions? Then this is the video for you. I'll walk you through every step on how to make this dress by Cynthia Rowley, number 1873. If you're an amateur sewer that knows their way around a sewing machine and how to sew a basic seam, then you can make this dress. This is a dress with vintage flair, perfect for a romantic date in summer, high tea with friends or prom. So let's get started. Here's all the equipment that you'll need for this project. You'll need at least 2 meters of woven, light to medium weight dress fabric such as satin, sateen, brocade or linen. In my case I'm using Japanese delusted satin. Only the bodice of this dress is lined, so you'll need about a meter of matching lining fabric. If you're looking to make a light, breathable summer dress, line the dress with cotton fabric. In terms of interfacing, only the decorative tab is interfaced in this dress so you can use whatever scrap pieces of interfacing you have around. I'm using heat fusing interfacing. Find yourself two large, pretty decorative buttons. This dress uses a 55cm or a 22 inch invisible zipper. You'll also need an invisible zipper foot which can be fitted to your machine. You'll need a spool of matching thread. This project requires all the usual sewing equipment such as the sewing machine, tailor's chalk, pins, an iron plus an ironing board. The pattern we are making is Simplicity 1873 by Cynthia Rowley. I'm making this dress in view C with a longer skirt. This pattern comes with three instruction sheets. See the reverse side of the pattern for the suggested sizing, fabric type and amount, and the notions. It's very important that you measure your bust and waist and choose your size based on them. If you are inexperienced in measuring yourself, you can always get a professional tailor to measure you. Size up if your bust or waist is too large for a particular size. There's no vanity sizing here. Now let's cut out the pattern. Here's an example of the bodice front piece. Sizes are written all over the edges of the pattern. For example, in this corner of this particular piece, we have sizes 6 to 14. I will be cutting along the line indicated as size 12. Each piece of the dress is numbered at the top. For dress C, we need to cut out pieces 4 to 9. With your scissors, cut around the outside of the pattern piece following the line indicated as your size. No need to cut along the lines inside of the pattern. These are the darts. You'll need to cut pieces 4 to 9 to make dress C. When you reach the skirt pieces, my tip is to cut around the longer hem. This way we can reuse the pattern in the future to make both the short and the long skirts. By folding the pattern piece along the hemline, when cutting the fabric we can make a shorter skirt. We're making dress C, but I like having a longer hem for my dresses so I'll be using the hemline for dresses A and B. Now we start cutting out the fabric. The first page of the instruction manual will tell you the order to place the pieces and their orientation. You will need to choose the instructions for your size and the width of your fabric. I'm using instructions 3C since I'm a size 12 and my fabric width is 150cm. The instructions indicate that the fabric needs to be folded in half widthwise. On the instruction sheet, piece 6 is shaded and needs to be placed face down on the fabric. The other pieces need to face up. We grab piece 6 and lay it face down so that the center front seam is straight against the fold of the fabric. Pin from the side closest to the fold, then all the way around the fabric. Grab your scissors and start cutting as close as possible to the pattern piece. Be sure to mark the notches. These are the triangles at the edge of the pattern. They will help you align the pieces when sewing. Continue around the rest of the pattern piece. Layout piece 8. In this case you need to align the grain line arrow on the pattern piece with the selvage edge of the fabric. Piece 4 needs to be placed on the fold so when you cut, you'll get two mirrored pieces that are joined together. So place the side of the pattern with the rectangle arrow against the fold.
Whatever you do, don't cut along this side of the pattern otherwise you'll cut your fabric piece in half. Piece 7 is placed on the fold and pieces 6 and 9 need to be placed next to it. Next we'll cut out the lining fabric. Fold your lining in half widthwise, just like the fabric. Pin and cut pieces 7 and 8 again with the lining fabric. Place piece 7 on the fold and piece 8 next to it. We will use these to line the bodice. For this dress, piece 9 needs to be interfaced. Grab your interfacing and fold it in half widthwise. Pin and cut piece 9 on the interfacing. From here onwards we follow the pattern instructions to sew dress C. We start by sewing darts into the bodice. On your pattern piece you will see dashed lines forming a triangle. These are the darts. For piece 7 there are darts at the bottom and sides. Don't cut along these lines, you'll be sewing them together. Open up piece 7 to the wrong side and pin the pattern piece down. Figure out which of the dashed triangles is the dart for your size and start pinning on the inside of the triangle, but not directly on the dashed line. Remove the pins holding the pattern piece in place and fold along the dashed line. Use a ruler and tailor's chalk to draw a line on the fabric next to the folded pattern piece. Do the same for the other side of the triangle. If you've done it right, the chalk line should look like the dashed line on the pattern. Repeat this process for the left dart. Flip the pattern piece over and place it against the other side of the fabric. Chalk out the darts for this side of piece 7 as well. Piece 8, which is the bodice back, also has a dart at the bottom. Repeat the chalking of the darts on the wrong side of the fabric for both of these pieces. Chalk a line through the middle of the dart triangles that you have marked. Pinch this line both at the top and the bottom to fold the triangles in half and pin at each end. Pin all along the dart. Make sure that the chalked edges of the dart align with each other like so. Repeat this for all the darts on pieces 7 and 8. Set up your sewing machine to do a straight stitch. You need to align the needle with the chalked line and sew straight to the end. Remember to back stitch. Next we sew the decorative tabs, which is piece 9. Apply your interfacing to the reverse side of the tabs and iron or sew down. Pin one interface tab piece to the matching uninterfaced tab piece with right sides together. We are sewing around the curved edge and leaving the short edge open. Align your fabric so that you are allowing 1cm seam allowance. Sew slowly around the curve. Pause and lift the foot to adjust when the angle becomes too steep. Trim the seam allowance. Cut notches into the remaining allowance close to the curved seam line. Do not cut into your sewing. 
Finish the seams by using a zigzag stitch around the edge. Pull the decorative tab inside out and iron the curve flat. Mark out the placement of the tabs by chalking the dots on the bottom corners of piece 7. Refer back to the pattern piece for the matching dots on the tab. Pin into place. Sew the tab into place with a 1cm seam allowance. This won't be seen in the final product. Sew down the bodice darts with a 1cm allowance to keep them in place. Refer to the instruction sheet for which way the dart should face. Place the bodice back piece on top of the front piece with right sides together. Match the notches at the top shoulder seam. Pin together and sew into place with the normal 1.5cm seam allowance. Moving on to the bodice lining. Sew all the darts for the front and the back bodice lining in the same way as the dress fabric. Sew the shoulder seams for the lining as well. Zigzag stitch on the edges of the shoulder seam. Lay down the edges at each side of the seam and sew into place with a 1cm seam allowance. Lay the bodice lining on top of the bodice fabric. We're now sewing the neckline and the armholes. Pin the two pieces together at the ends of the neckline and the armhole. Measure 1.5cm at the shoulder seam. Align the shoulder seams with a pin like so at 1.5cm. Pin both sides together at the shoulder seam. Then pin all around the neckline and the armhole. Back to the sewing machine, we start by aligning the shoulder seams. My method for the perfect alignment is to stitch over the aligning seam at 1.5cm without back stitching. Open up the pieces and check if they're aligned. If not, you can easily unpick and try again. Do this for all four of the shoulder seams that need to be aligned. Once you're done with aligning, sew all around the neckline and the armholes. Trim the seam allowance of the neckline and armholes in half. Cut notches into the allowance like with the tab. Do this for the entire neckline and armhole. Finish the seam with a zigzag stitch. We will now understitch the lining. Open up the bodice at the edge of the armhole seam so that the lining is facing up. Make sure that the seam allowance is facing towards the lining. Pin down the lining for as far as you can along the seam. We now stitch on the lining side with a seam allowance of 5mm from the armhole seam. Make sure that the seam allowance for the armhole seam is being sewn into the lining. Do this for as far as you can up the armhole without catching the other fabric into the sewing. Understitch the entire neckline and armholes. Now we need to pull the bodice right side out. Pull the bodice back piece through the shoulder strap. Bring the sides of the bodice together and pin. Be sure to align the armhole seam at 1.5cm. Repeat this for the other side of the bodice side seam. Base stitch the armhole seam and check that it is aligned. Sew the side seam and repeat for the other side.
trim the seam allowance to about half and finish with a zigzag stitch. We're now chalking out the pleat markings on the top of the skirt pieces. Do this on the right side of the fabric. Pin the pattern piece on top of the fabric. Place a pin on one side of each of the lines which mark the pleats. In some cases, you'll need to choose the pleat marking for your size. Pull out the extra pins holding the pattern into place. Fold the pattern piece along the pleat line. Use a ruler and tailor's chalk to draw the line on the fabric. Remove the pins and move on to the next pleat. Be sure to mark the dashed pleat lines with a dashed chalk line or an X. Chalk out the pleat markings for all of the skirt pieces. We now sew the skirt pieces together. Match pieces 4 and 5 at the double notch. Pin the pieces right sides together. Sew together with a 1.5cm seam allowance. Do this for both sides. Pin and sew together pieces 5 and 6. Finish with a zigzag stitch. We'll pin the pleats from the edges to the centre of the skirt, starting with piece 6. Mark out the arrows on the pattern to help you see where the pleats need to be placed. Pinch the fabric along the solid pleat line and pin. Place the fold on the dashed pleat line in the direction indicated by the arrow. Pin the layers together. The last pleat of the skirt needs to be aligned with the seam. Next up is piece 5. This piece only has one pleat. The other marking is a placement for the pleat on the other section. Pin the pleat so that it is pressed up against the side seam. Moving on to piece 4. Move from the seam to the center. The first pleat covers the seam and is placed on the previous section. The pleats at the centre of piece 4 must be pressed together. Base stitch the pleats into place by sewing down the pleat next to the fold. Leave some extra thread at the end of your stitching so that you can pull the stitching out. Do this for all the pleats. Baste at 1cm around the top of the skirt to flatten the pleats. Here's the exciting part where you get to see the dress come together. Grab your bodice piece and pin the tabs out of the way. Peel away the lining and lay the bodice on top of the skirt so that the right sides are together. Align the side seam of the skirt and the bodice together and pin. Base stitch to check that the seams are aligned.
Pin the rest of the skirt and the bodice together. Sew together at 1.5 cm. Pull out the basting stitches holding the pleats into place. Trim the seam allowance of the skirt to about half and zigzag around the seam. While you're at it, zigzag stitch all the remaining raw edges. Now we sew in the invisible zipper. Lay your zipper next to the edge of the back of the dress. Open the zipper and pull aside the lining. Place the left side of the zipper on top of the fabric so that the teeth face away from the edge of the seam. The head of the zipper must be facing towards the fabric. Make sure that the teeth of the zipper are 1.5cm away from the edge of the fabric. Pin the zipper down. Replace your normal presser foot with an invisible zipper foot. We use straight stitch at the center position. We're sewing the zip on the left side so the zipper teeth must be placed on the left ridge at the bottom of the foot. As you sew down the zipper you must press the teeth flat against the fabric just in front of where it moves into the zipper foot. We do this to ensure that the foot sews as close as possible to the teeth. Sew until you reach the head of the zipper. Now we pin the other side of the zipper. Zip up the dress and flatten the zipper. We need to align the seam for the bodice and the skirt at both sides of the zipper. Chalk out 1.5cm from the edge of the fabric at this seam. Fold along the seam allowance and pin. Align this folded edge with the seam already attached to the zipper. Pin into place as far away as possible from the zipper teeth. Unzip the dress. On the wrong side of the dress you must re-pin the zipper so that the pins pierce the zipper tape and only one layer of the fabric. Remove the other pins. Base stitch over the seam that needs to be aligned from the bottom up. Place your zipper teeth underneath the left ridge on the zipper foot and sew. Zip the dress up and check that you are happy with the alignment. Pin the rest of the zipper down. This time we sew from the bottom of the zipper to the top. Zip up the dress. Mark the end of your sewing on the zipper and pin the zipper flat. Open the zipper up so that the head is near your marking and slide into the arm of the machine. Sew over the chalk marking a few times. This technique prevents the zipper head from coming down too far on the seam and getting stuck. Pin the rest of the skirt back seam with right sides together.
start sewing from the end of the zipper to the bottom of the skirt. Leave a little space from the end of the zip and you're sewing. I'm using a fell stitch for this seam. We push the needle diagonally from one edge of the seam to the other. Take a small amount of fabric in the needle. The next stitch needs to be placed on the opposite side that the needle last exited. We're going to sew in the decorative button, no need to add a shank. Pull the lining aside and pin down the decorative tabs. Place your buttons nicely at the center. Push your needle through the wrong side of the fabric then pass it through the two buttonholes. Push the needle through the right side of the fabric and repeat until the button is nicely placed. Repeat for the other tab. Using your iron, press down the seam allowance of 1.5cm at the bottom edge of the lining. Pin the lining down on the dress so that the fold of the lining covers the seam for the bodice and the skirt. Align the darts and the side seams to give you a sense of where the lining needs to be placed. Leave the corners of the lining open for now. Start hand stitching from the edge of your pinning. This can be a little tricky since it needs to be a neat stitch on the lining side and not visible from the fabric side. Here's my method. First, pass the needle through the edge of the lining from the wrong side. Then press the needle through the seam allowance of the skirt but do not pull through. You must not pierce the right side of the fabric. So check that you can't see your needle on the right side then pull through. Pass the needle through the lining and begin the next stitch. Sew as close to the skirt seam as possible and make small vertical stitches. Now we're up to sewing the lining down on the zipper. Fold the zipper tape down into its seam allowance and pin. Place the lining down on the zipper so that the edge is folded underneath. The lining must be about 5mm away from the zipper teeth. This allows the head of the zipper enough space to slide without catching the lining in the zipper. Create a neat corner at the end. Sew the lining onto the zipper using the same hand sewing technique. Be sure to check that your needle isn't piercing the right side of the fabric as you sew. Sew around the corner until all the lining is sewn onto the dress. Repeat for the other side of the zipper. The last step before you can wear this dress is to hem it. With your iron, press down the hem allowance of 2.5 inches or 6.4 centimeters. Fold away the edge of the hem and pin into place. I'm going to sew a blind hem into this dress. 
Knot your thread into the back seam allowance. Run the needle through one layer of the folded hem so that the thread can't be seen on the layer facing towards you. Pull the thread through. Now on the wrong side of the skirt, you need to pick up just a few threads of fabric near to where the needle exited the hem. Pull through. On the right side of the skirt, the stitches should be nearly invisible. Continue stitching into the hem. When you reach the end, do a few stitches into the seam allowance and knot off. That's it! We've made this fit and flare dress from a few meters of fabric, a pattern and everyday sewing supplies. I hope you've learned a few new sewing techniques watching and following this video. Remember, clothing construction generally follows the same steps. Once you know what to do at each of these steps, you'll be a pro. Look out for my future pattern tutorial videos where I'll be covering the sewing of classic outfits from current patterns to help you learn clothing construction. There's lots more to come so stay tuned!